Oh, the bad guys. They're scary. They're, they're freaky. We love to hate them, am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We are Cinema 3D. I'm McNeil, and today we are gathered here <laughs> to discuss our top five favorite villains. I am joined with Justin, John, Griffin, Mike, and Sam. And today we are talking about the villains we love to hate. We are talking about the top five villains. We're talking about the cliche ones. We're talking about the ones that you don't really think about often. We're talking about them all. So we are starting off right now, listing off our top five favorite villains, starting with Scott Mark. Wow. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> All right. John, I want you to tell everybody here who is the fifth film character live action, because Justin said oh, no animated. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, that works. We, that works uh, out. No, no, no. It's it's live action. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep my number five actually now. So I'm not changing it. It's, it's live action. Animated. It is live action. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it actually well, was. So <laughs> Okay, so my number five uh favorite is, villain of all time. Yes. Film or television. Film or television. It is Michael Myers, aka uh, the uh, aka the shape. Michael That's a wrap, we're done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had to put him in there. Uh his classic. Uh, but also, what the, a villain should creep you out. Yes. And I think he creeps me out um, 100%. He, uh, or it, yeah, I mean, he, yes, he looks like a man, but he does not act like a man. And, every, you know, you just do not know what he um, is thinking, what he's doing, who is he looking for, who is he stalking, like all that stuff is just absolutely amazing. The fact that he... He blurs a line between suit the supernatural, but also just being a man, which that just is just freaking weird. Mm -hmm. um, really intrigues me. Um, but I love I love the the true essence where you just don't know. It's open ended. Mm -hmm. You don't need to explain anything like the like what the remakes did. It, it's just simple. He is the shape, and yeah, number five. Number five. Wow. It's a good number five. Ready? I think it's a great number Start. five. What are you talking about? No, I mean, like, it's a good entry. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Michael Myers. Michael, Michael cool. Myers. <laughs> Honestly, I thought you were saying because you think I didn't hear it. Um, um, all right, so now this is a crazy idea, but what I was thinking is you go next. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's do it. All right, this is Justin's fifth favorite you. villain of all time. I think it's going to hurt you. Oh. Or ooh, it could hurt. Oh, uh, it hurt me like like that. Oh no. Okay, it's okay. My I'm see. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling a Sam. Here's the thing. Oh, here's there the thing. we go. Uh, I could switch. I could switch these oh, quite I often. Switch. I could switch could these. Switch them. <laughs> <laughs> but my number one will never switch. Okay. Um, no. as far as live action goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for right now, my number five is going to be Negan from The Walking Dead. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's that from, Sam? Where's he? Where does he? Uh... What else have I seen? Yeah. the character of Negan in. So yeah. I've never watched the series. Very sad. What the Walking? The Walking Dead. Alive, the Dead. The Walking Alive. <laughs> the Standing Dead. <laughs> walking the Living. <laughs> I've never seen this program, but I believe the character of Negan, if I'm not mistaken, is what's his name? Um, Bradley, am I right? <laughs> no, no, not no. even close. No, no, it's the guy who's in Batman vs Superman, right? Yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey D. Morgan, who plays Thomas Wayne in the opening scene of Batman v Superman and Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition, oh and my. he's in Rampage. You could have said Watchmen as it's the good. comedian. Yeah, and he's in that movie. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. I just named off quite a few. He's the best I part of winning. Rampage. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> yeah, Negan, he's one of those guys, like, I don't know. He, he shows up midway through the show, like season five, season six, and he just wrecks shop. I mean, people always say the governor is the best villain from The Walking Dead. It's just not true. It's Negan. Governor's good. It's great. Oh, he's a bad guy, but, like, he's, he's a good villain. <laughs> but, like, Negan is just on a different level. He's the only one who has, like, gone completely toe-to-toe -to -toe with rick grimes and has made him shift on a lot of his more morality um and then with what happens in the show later on no spoilers but like he does stay quite a while and keeps wrecking shop but he also like he's just such a great character it's that same type of thing that we've seen with certain other villains where they either keep staying bad or they can end up trying to turn a new leaf mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I love about Negan. It's just he's he's that type of guy. He's 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 that guy. 
Like Steve's like, <laughs> can you? I can't look at him. Yeah, you are that guy. So, yeah, do you want to be that guy? I did have a question for Justin regarding The Walking Dead. Uh oh, what is it? <laughs> you did say now Negan is the best character in the series. I do want to ask. Oh, you didn't say this. Best villain. Okay, I retract my question. Thank you. How does the defendant <laughs> like, I like. He's <laughs> clicking him. <laughs> How does the defendant plead? No, Rick Grimes is the best Guilty. character, but Negan is like top three. Nice. All right. I think Daryl's number two. And that's what we look for, you know? We look for villains who are going to rile up the hero, challenge him, make the hero ultimately grow into a better character. But we don't want just a walk in the park kind of villain. Mm -hmm. No, we want somebody who makes you go, <clears throat> wow. And that's Negan. Yeah. That's Negan for me. Yeah. Now we're going to be uh, passing it on over to the real Sam. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this whole thing's been a ploy. Um, <laughs> a ploy. <laughs> now, earlier today, you mentioned that you had your top five favorite villains planned for over five years. Yeah, I did. And you've, been, sure. wait and you've been on a waiting list for five years to be on this podcast. That's exactly right. To reveal this. <laughs> so that's pretty exciting. So now you have your moment to reveal your number five, and we're thrilled to hear it. And John actually initiated doing a drum roll before you start if that's okay <laughs> do i have to really do it yeah. what do we got for him johnny number five my number five is thanos all right Whoa. Whoa. all right that's great yeah yeah, thanos. <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally. would have been like <laughs> <laughs> and what is what is it that inspires or does not inspire you about the 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 big purple monster well so <laughs> i actually just re <laughs> <laughs> i just rewatched infinity war for like the 11th time Same. the nice. other day yeah. and you still like even though you know what happens at the end like you feel the threat of thanos mm. throughout the entire yep. time because marvel's been building up yep. to him for that point for 10 years absolutely and at that point villains didn't really win i guess maybe technically baron zemo in civil war mm -hmm. kind of won but yeah thanos like just demolished everything and yeah. marvel had the balls to just go full throttle with a villain winning with a devastating ending and then yeah. just left us there for a year to yeah guess what would happen next um but then also you understand his motivations and it's not like you don't want to agree with him but it's like you see where he's coming from mm -hmm. and that's different from marvel because up until that point for the most part they had the villain problem mm -hmm. where there are a lot of superficial just i want to control i want power kind of villains you know and thanos like actually had well-written motivations in yeah. the story and so like you understood where he's coming from and by the end you're like all right well he he did what he said he would do and mm -hmm. it was completely it wasn't personal you know he just thought that was how he needed to correct the universe or everything was balanced and it was just you know devastating to watch so yeah, yeah. um i think he's the best marvel villain of all time just like uh just like magneto the scariest villain is the villains that think they're doing right yeah that's to right. me the scariest and just like magneto Thanos, one hundred percent. Did you yes. just tease? No, but <laughs> Mag no, no, Mag Magneto's definitely like in my top ten for yeah, sure. He yeah. is. I mean, really like good. I think, yeah. And that's and that's old. I'm talking about the more the Ian McKellen one too. Yeah, yeah. The Ian McKellen version of Magneto is just freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're at McNeil's. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yes, yes, yes. All right. So I just came up with this before we started rolling, and I'm still not certain about the way I want to go about this. If I want to do only one per series, if I want to just say who my favorite villains are, what do you think? Should I do Limitless? Limitless? Yeah, just go with what your only heart the villain is. Villain for movie Limitless? All right. Never seen it. <laughs> I don't even, yeah. Technically, that's Killian Murphy. <laughs> well, no, it's like, just like um, I, I didn't know if you were being serious or not. I never oh, heard okay. that movie. So, um, we're talking about really, really, we're talking about doing endless possibilities here. All things go, all series, doesn't matter who it is. This is action. the villains, the top five greatest villains, in my opinion, of all time. Yes, yes, yes. Well, in that case, I think that there's no chance that this number five pick does not make it on this list. He is... Oh, now you're starting? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this. He is the 
antithesis in every way to our main protagonist. He challenges the main protagonist to become a better hero. He, in, in a sense, helps develop the main protagonist into who, who he is to learn to be the hero that he needs to be, to learn what he actually needs to fight for, to learn what he needs to become. And every single time you think, man, this guy's knocked out, this guy's gone, bam, he comes right back again. You can't <laughs> stop him, John. You I, can't stop him. I can't. <laughs> you can't stop his brains. You can't stop his wits. And the worst part is he loves to be evil. He flaunts his villainess. He just goes, full almost showmanship with it he is a he's a performer with it and this is the perfect villain for an up and rising hero to be challenged and develop man in their origin story if this is dr robotnik i'm gonna be number five is dr robotnik no! Jim Carrey. Yes. You guys can all say, what? But this is an amazing performance from Jim Carrey. It's incredible to see him harken back to his oh, wow. 90s zaniness and yeah, to almost yeah. his Riddler type performance of this genius yet evil dude, but do it in a place that feels way more fitting where he's allowed to mm. flaunt this completely just crazy character and be as charismatic as he is. And he just, I'm so proud of the way he performed this role, being uh -huh. that big of an actor and playing a character from video games and animation and actually doing the character justice mm. in live action and making it so legitimate of a role. So for all of those reasons of everything Jim Carrey brought to the table playing that character and everything I said earlier. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put in Jim Carrey's Dr. Ivo Robotnik at number five. You, you, had, to what a name. In it. you had to at least mention Sonic once. I told him to. I yeah. told him if he didn't mention Sonic then I wasn't going to be a happy camper. No, he was not <laughs> happy. What are you going to do, pout? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, now we're going to um, be giving over Griffin who's been waiting eight years to reveal this list. So, <laughs> First of all, I respect the Robotnik pick. Oh, thank you. Supremely is one of the few people in this room that's seen and thoroughly enjoyed the Sonic films, cinema that they are. We always appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the real exactly. question is how long were you guys going to shake your hand? <laughs> Until the press had enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so from my pick, uh, I, I I still count because there is a live action adaptation of this character, but this is oh, technically boy. and originally a book character. And that was adapted into the live action uh -huh. and uh to me one of the most delightfully frustrating villains of all time is dolores jane umbridge Ooh, yes. from harry how? potter and the oh. order of the phoenix <laughs> I, was like, I was like how do you know who this is <laughs> nice. you get that little you hear that little <laughs> like her little like <laughs> and you, you, yes. you're like <gasps> All right. Yeah. She represents that like sweetness kind of evil that she's like, oh, hello, Harry. I'm going to destroy your life, but smile the whole time. See, Justin's never seen them and he's, he cringes, you know. <laughs> That's a terrible impression, but as you do. All right. And like, Umbridge represents like the government, the magical government trying to destroy Harry's life, but under the guise of justice and responsibility and trying to portray Harry as essentially like a pseudo terrorist, but he's at school and she's a teacher making his life hell and everyone else's life hell, but she's like backed by the government. Mm -hmm. So she can have her own way and she just smiles and is all like happy go lucky about it. It's terrifying. It's highly upsetting to anybody because as you read it, you're obviously from the perspective of the truth and they're from the perspective of the untruth and so as the as the reader watcher you know what's going on and you know how wrong it all is and oh it's just wildly upsetting hmm. so uh umbridge umbridge is my number five wow pick. she's like one of those second grade teachers that you hated mm. but <laughs> even worse you know yes but like uh, to, to the nth degree yeah. of all, all things the teacher who has it out for you constantly for no reason you know hmm. yeah very nice i got matilda vibes from that <laughs> Matilda vibes. Regarding Matilda, all I have to say is, frankly, I cringe, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and leaning into John's number four pick, Max Trek from Batman. No, it's, <laughs> just, it's definitely not. Uh, pops, <laughs> my, <laughs> my number four uh, is an icon iconic villain uh, played by probably one of the best actors ever to be on film. Um, that is Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. Dr. Hannibal Lecter, actually. Well, that was it. 
<laughs> what? I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> I don't you know what that was. Feeling. Justin just pooted right now. No, that's not me. We're all pretty sure. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> Can we get a playback on that? <laughs> Can we roll back the film? <laughs> oh, but yeah, no. H- Hannibal Lecter, uh, played by Anthony Hopkins, uh, Silence of the Lambs is amazing. Um, I really feel like without Silence, you wouldn't have gotten, you know, all these other uh, police procedural uh, semi horror. Uh, films like Seven, mm. uh, Zodiac, and whatnot. Like uh, this was the film that started it all. And yes, while technically Hannibal Lecter, what, what that wasn't Lecter's first time on screen. You did have Manhunter way back in the day, but that was played by Brian Cox. This is played by Anthony Hopkins. And the moment you see him, first of all, not even the moment, the build up when uh, Jodie Foster's character is just just hearing about Lecter and how crazy he is and all these stories and then you see her walking into the prison and it's just all you see is a camera just going to that cell and Lecter's just right there with a big big grin and just says good morning and it's like whoa that is freaky mm. he's smart he's calculative he's very manipulative too and you just don't you don't know whether whether or not he's gonna be on one on one end trying to talk to you and have a conversation and then another end just want to literally kill you and and, and eat you eat your face yeah literally <laughs> um it's great he's such a fascinating villain um and literally does make the movie and elector is not even in it that that much but when he is it's terrific and silence of the lambs is one of my favorite films of all time um and he's uh lector's been in, in in multiple films for sure uh and you know anthony hopkins makes those movies but in reality silence of the lambs and what's great is that he's always he's the type of villain that is always behind a cell and i like that because it's like yo what would happen if you let him loose and you see some of that and it's just creepy mm-hmm. and i absolutely love it so yeah no he wouldn't know what to do with himself <laughs> if he was let loose oh well <laughs> i mean he's like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> this is an open world game for my time. <laughs> end of finding nemo spoiler alert when they what? when they roll out what? The, um, the bags and he's like <laughs> oh, it all. that was the shortest red light i've ever seen and they do. they're just like <laughs> no <Noah. laughs> <laughs> wow we go from silence of the lambs <laughs> and cannibalism to finding nemo <laughs> <laughs> well, well, number four. Number four. Um, we're going to go to Justin okay. for his number four, mm. if he's ready for it. I'm ready. I'm, Are you, I've got my challenge. five completely solid now. Okay. I just shifted them when John was doing his first pick. Wow. Um, All right. My number four, don't know if anyone else will have it on here, but uh, it's Wilson Fisk. Wow. Wilson. Yes, yes. <laughs> he's the guy who did the thing. He's the bald he's guy. He's Kingpin. Oh, okay. He's the bald guy. He's the white Thanos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My bad. Uh, I mean, I haven't watched the program in a minute. Yeah, these Daredevils, the one I'm thinking of. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he's in Hawkeye and Echo, which is one of the worst shows I've ever seen. Mm. Uh, but anyway. Worse. He's in Spider Verse too. In Spider Verse, like animated dude, he looks yeah. wild in Spider Verse. <laughs> he just looks like dude doesn't skip back. To- <laughs> he just looks like a rock. <laughs> it's a boulder. <laughs> but he is uh, again. He does. He he he's so smart and cunning that he can do things from behind the scenes, mm. and you don't even know he did it. But he always has a hand in everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and Daredevil, being the show that it is, uh, he is. You know they're in the city and he has like basically everyone under him like he has his hand in every such situ- every company every like governmentals whatever you call that um man i'm losing my track my words here uh it's just like <laughs> um, I was I'm here. You understand what I'm he relishes. He relishes in his power, but he also is trying to do good too. And like I said, that's one of yeah. the scariest. Mm-hmm. But it's all the scariest. He wears a mean suit, but he also does. Yes, care. He does. Like that's that's the one where you actually like. Yes, Thanos. You see him care about Gamora. Yes, other villains that shall not be named currently. You see them care about people, but like he's literally ready to get married to what's her face, Vanessa. Vanessa, mm-hmm. and just 
<laughs> stuff happens and like he, yeah. you can you can see and feel how much how distraught he is when all that stuff goes down like in season three. Oh, oh man dude yes but he's also physically so strong and like unassuming because he just looks like a fat dude but he is he is strong especially when you see hawkeye he like he can punch through freaking superman mm -hmm. not really mm -hmm. but you know what i mean yeah but yeah wilson fisk kingpin he he is the kingpin of the city and yeah. uh he's one of the best iterations i've seen from him from daredevil and i think he'll continue to be in my top five for a long time if not ever yeah mm -hmm. so that's my number four that's my number four Nice. phenomenal analysis on that character i didn't know i didn't know that was his name i was gonna I say kingpin, kingpin but wilson fisk sounded cooler yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um sam we are going to go over to your number four pick all right my number four is john doe from seven nice yes. yeah yeah i good. think what's really cool about that villain in particular is that he's not even revealed until the very beginning of the third act but you just feel his presence in the first two acts um and his plan throughout the whole movie is just so disturbing where he's killing all of these innocent people who um I guess indulge in one of the seven deadly sins and he's trying to like send this message to society that all of these things just go completely unchecked and including himself which is why the end happens the way it does I don't, I'm not going to go into spoilers because it's a very spoiler heavy mm -hmm. movie and there are people out there who haven't seen it but you know he leaves a lasting impact on on cinema for sure because people still talk about it to this day and this was this is nearly a 30 year old movie mm -hmm. and um <laughs> That's crazy. And it's um, Kevin Spacey, so it's a little fitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's a, a great pick. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love Seven. I want it. Yeah. Well, I had him in the my ages. options. It's like fine wine. Yes. That's, yeah. It's a top three movie of all time oh, for me. Oh, yeah. Huh. The opening. It's your number three, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, number three. Yeah. 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 Look at I that. love it. I remember. <laughs> wow. John, you, you've seen Seven. I've seen seven. We've all seen seven. We all watched seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Heck yeah. I think we all agree that's a great movie, right? Oh, that's fine. Oh, you kidding? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We watched I, seven and Joker back to back. That was a long day. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a really good double feature. Yeah, it is though. It was a great double feature, but it also I, think, back. I don't I don't know if you were there that I might have watched it. I might have watched it later. With, on with, the, yeah. Oh, you watched it with us. I know he watched, watched seven with us, but I don't think he was there the double feature. I no. Joker with you guys. I no, true. Sure. To see that with yeah. you guys. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that was wild. a depressing. It was great because they're both great, but that was a depressing yeah. night. <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, which one do we start oh with? Uh, I don't know. They're both bad. Like, <laughs> yeah. As far as depressing. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. It's a great yeah. pick. I'm curious. Well, what's McNeil's pick? So McNeil has decided he was going to do one, you know, earlier. We, we we had talked about it earlier and we mentioned potentially doing one per franchise in my last pick. But then we decided that we're going to go anything goes. So anything. for this, I have to give it to a villain who is the mastermind behind an entire story and an entire saga, the person who pulls all the strings, the person who makes it all happen, an unstoppable villain who in both sets of trilogies, we're going only two sets of trilogies for this, <laughs> he works perfectly as the unveiling mastermind behind it all and as the build up to the final boss the mm -hmm. the final plateau of a villain which either way if, you, if you're going this way with him or you're going this way with him it works and this is none other than Sheev yes. Palpatine Sheev. <laughs> Emperor Sheev Senate Palpatine Darth Sidious Darth's Emperor Sheev Darth Sidious Senate too many Palpatine I just love that you <laughs> Just, I just love that you decided to have him just call him by his real name. Sheev. As if that's intimidating or at the all. Senate, as he is. Yes. <laughs> um, and it, it is true, though, and it's amazing how in the prequels, you know, if you did, if you had, if you were never introduced to Star Wars at all and you had no introduction, mm -hmm. similar to my video, which you can see on Cinema 3D, I showed my girlfriend Star Wars for the first time. Sure. If I started with the prequels, and she would have absolutely no idea who he was yeah. because it's not like she knows that this is even a character in the first place. So mm -hmm. if you are starting the story from Phantom Menace, mm -hmm. you are slowly unveiling that he is the villain behind it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, he is going toe to toe with Yoda, the mm -hmm. Grand Master. We've seen Yoda act. And this is like, 
he's unstoppable basically and he ruins everything yeah. but then when you're watching it from the opposite end and you're watching star wars where you've never seen anything else with the original trilogy you are watching it from the angle of okay episode four um, the Emperor will not be pleased with this. We understand that the galaxy is in turmoil and somebody's controlling all the strings, but you only hear about him. Mm -hmm. And it's such an incredible build up to finally then you only see him that one time in episode five, but yep. it's a hologram. And mm -hmm. I just think that people don't talk about that enough. How, oh, I agree. Because people are so used to one through six, mm -hmm. but you don't break down four through six of the build up to meeting this guy who then says, now you will call me master. Yes. Oh. And that's why Palpatine has to end there. Yep, I agree. Because that is his send off. I agree. And it makes no sense. Mm. And uh check out our Star Wars Tears on Tears Tears and Tears. Tears and Tears and Tears list for more on Rise of Skywalker, folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. And now we are going to pull it send it on over to the man who said, quote, I hate a new hope. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds later. Griffin! A new hope, more like a new dookie, am I right? Uh, I'm uh, joking! Uh, uh, I'm joking! A new hope's a great just, I'm, I'm joking! That, I'm I'm totally, joking. Hey, he apparently likes watching paint dry, a la Phantom Menace. Whoa! Hey! Oh, I like we're getting distracted. I don't agree I'm with either of these claims. We're, look, we're all feeling it. We're all saying hurtful things that we don't mean right now. I get it. Dark Knight sucks. <laughs> what? Wait, whoa. <laughs> a new hope is a great I film. I love movies. it. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I even here? <laughs> All right. All right. Number villain four. number four is the most recent villain on my list. Uh, this would be the High Evolutionary from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, yeah. A great sick. Great Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Dude, Did not I'm have that. Have you seen Guardians this is no. one of the best MCU really, villains for sure. That's a phenomenal choice. Uh -huh. Yeah. That came out of, what is it? Right field? Left, left field. field. Left yeah. field. What? I, I can't. When we're thinking about villains at this stage of the of the list, we're not really getting to my like most compelling villains of all time yet. I'm still like my four and five picks and a little bit of my theorem are like the ones that disgruntle me the most. Mm. You know, and like Umbridge just makes me super frustrated. Mm. And like High Evolutionary is like, you, you know, when you get from like human cruelty to animal cruelty, yeah. like. When, 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 like, I'm sorry, it's the truth. When a human's getting like messed up, you're like, yeah, but they probably deserve it. You have no soul. Or like, you, you can, you can fathom that. Like, a person's not inherently innocent. Or you like, think they John Wick is a person. John Wick. Exactly. But when you get to an animal, you're like, that is something that is so pure and innocent. Really? And the high evolutionary's whole character arc is animal cruelty. Bro. And I, that just adds a whole nother layer of like, this is actually evil. You know, not that human cruelty isn't actually evil. I would like to make that abundantly. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> Thanks but, for claiming uh, that. Yeah. But um, um, second controversy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we can all agree something, emotion cook. <laughs> something emotionally about the animal cruelty just hits a little bit yeah, differently, yeah. you know, when you're yeah. seeing it like that. And um, the way that it that it intertwines with Rocket's backstory and the evolution of the high evolutionary as a as a character, and just like it's it's gripping. He is maddening and frustrating in the best ways. Mm. It's creepy. Um, Yes, he's very creepy. Yeah. The actor who portrays him does a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, when I think of like villains, I don't like. High evolutionary. I don't know why. It's a high evolutionary. Wow, wow, Griffin. Really? Yeah, no, that was um, somebody who I didn't even think about at all. Was I'll throw it on this list. So. Um, yeah, and new. That was a new pick. It was new. <laughs> I just heard a rough. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to throw it on over to John How for his that? number. Ooh, interceptor. Or his number three pick <laughs> of villain of the week. Okay, so it's going to be another horror pick. No. Uh, my uh, th number three favorite villain. Uh, the best villains are always the tragic ones, too. Mm -hmm. And this one is definitely one of the most tragic villains ever because he is intimidating, but then you also sympathize mm -hmm. with what he has gone through. And he just looks freaking cool. Mm. That is Darth Vader. There he is. <laughs> yes. Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, I mean, what is it to say? I mean, we already, yeah. we, we've already talked about it, but I mean, he just looks amazing. He, look, he looks amazing. <laughs> James Earl Jones, rest in, rest peace, in peace, by the way. Yeah, uh, we lost an icon. He uh, has probably the best voice ever. Next to Peter Cullen from Op with, uh, uh, and Kevin Conroy. And Morgan Freeman. And a lot of people, yeah. but but <laughs> they're the iconic yeah. people. Like, oh, yeah, yeah they like they made the role. 
and the he role did. lasts a lifetime. So. He did, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, could you imagine Orson Welles playing, uh, voicing Almost, Vader? Yeah, it could. That could have worked, but I thank mean, God they it, have Earl. They did Earl Jones. Would have been very familiar. Would have been a little bit more theatrical. Yes, very much. Vader, which is which I love. That's where George Lucas was heading for. Yeah, heading towards. But he got it, James Earl Jones. He did. Oh, little, absolutely. Probably a little bit more compelling than Orson Welles at that. Yes. Well, I don't know. I, I feel like. Mm. I mean, or it would have been fine, but yeah. I think he, I think it, I don't know. I think James Earl Jones has maybe made it grounded a little bit more. You don't think wasn't a familiar voice? You don't think David Prowse could have done a great job voicing? Is that facts. the original guy? Yeah. yeah. Have you heard that shit? It's uh, like whoa. Wasn't it like a regular voice? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, was like, he was a big. He was I'm you know Vader. pretty. He was a pretty buff dude and tall, but yeah. like then he yeah. talked. Talks like this. Yeah. It's like, whoa. I want them alive. <laughs> yes. It's very strange. But uh but yeah, no, I mean Darth Vader. Yeah. A tragic absolutely. a tragic villain that just looks so cool. Tragic villain, one of the greats. Uh it's been said, it's all been said. If you know, you know mm -hmm. it's Darth Vader. Yeah. Right. So I like it. Justin, I've been wondering for a while now, mm -hmm. what's your third favorite villain of all? <laughs> Every time you come to me, I feel like you're gonna switch up the order. <laughs> <laughs> so my third pick for top five villains of all time live action is Darth Vader. Oh, uh, wow. first repeat. Oh, don't really need to say much because it's already been said. Cheater, but hey. <laughs> But yeah, he. Are oh, you saying his name? <laughs> that, that's all he says is hi. Hey. It's like, what are we gonna do with that? So yeah, he. I mean, every time I watch the originals, mm -hmm. and you know, two thirds of the prequels, and that's it. Uh, I like him even more. Yeah. Um, I start because each time I watch it, I realize like if I was to watch this when I was actually young, like how much this would be one of my favorite characters of all time mm -hmm. and one of my favorite, probably my favorite villain of all time. Mm -hmm. I didn't. So it's not the case, but I also do understand how that can be for many people. Yeah. It's not um, three, though. It's not number three, like there's a lot of villains to pull from. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like after seeing the series quite a bit and getting to like What's the word that I'm thinking of? Like familiarize, familiarize, indulge, soak it in. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, bad stuff, Feel all it. the in between stuff. It's, Feel it, breathe it's it. Just, yeah. He's got to be mm -hmm. on the list Everything. anywhere. Everything. And I couldn't put him at two or one, right. but I think three is a perfect spot for Vader. I think three is a great spot for Vader. Um, and John does as well. It's okay. Well. It's okay. I should taste it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, so. Um, bravo. Thank you. Very well done. This has been a long time coming. I feel like you guys you guys sat me in front of a TV, tied my arms to the chair, and said, watch Star Wars. It is interesting when... Yeah. Uh, we fed that shit. I was like, yeah. it's garbage! We fed it like a baby. Like, you're gonna, we, you're gonna enjoy this. <laughs> we attempted for a long time to show Justin Star Wars. He had never... He'd seen The Force Awakens and A New Hope, but that was pretty much it, and he didn't remember A New Hope at all. Was it when we watched the original A New Hope on VHS? Yes! It turned aside for me? Yes, uh, yes, for a New it did, Hope. and it was glorious. For A New Hope, but then it also kind of like shifted my entire mentality on Star Wars. Hey, well, yeah. we've, we made you watch it so many times. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, but, but, but think about it though. We, we you like it now? <laughs> but, but think about it though. Like even he was, but even he was saying that like, whoa, this is different than the Blu-ray or yeah. the, the the cut that's always been available. And it's like, no, man, this is actually what it is. It's much more of a breeze to watch. It's just mm -hmm. fun yeah. as hell. Yeah. Ninety-five VHS version is what yeah, we watched. Yeah, man, that was great. We yeah, just plugged great. it into my TV and got a VCR and just. Oh, it was great. Yep, absolutely. The, and the, the meeting, cables. Mm -hmm. and the interview with George Lucas. Yes. When he's like, you know, the first first movie is very, very sand, yeah, and very just, tan, and the second just, movie is white. Yeah, wow. <laughs> just very, oh, because it was <laughs> very <laughs> awkward. Second and movie. Third, no, third movie had had some green, and I always, I were very different films, always made it very different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's um, great, George. But I was thinking a lot about lately where when you all of a sudden like we were trying to see what to watch john had something in the works and he wanted to show us i don't remember what it was that was almost going to be watched that night but then you said you know i want to watch the original star wars no you said yeah you were like <laughs> i could watch all of star wars right now and oh, i, I said i'll oh, put it put it Dude, and, and that that was a literally that was literally just us being like say a word you okay. hesitated for a second yeah and i was like john <laughs> like, no, you're right you're right you're right <laughs> And it was great. I could tell you two options that come to mind. It's gonna piss John off. What? I always like to piss him off once. It was probably either Dread or Last of Mohicans. Oh fuck off! <laughs> Those are two great movies. I don't care what anyone says. Last of Mohicans. 
someone with a better than Chris. I mean, I could agree with that. That's Michael Mann, baby. Phantom Menace is better than Last Mohicans. Wow. Red. Full to the mother. Yes, it's shit. definitely. I mean, I mean you would agree. Too, but I, I, disagree. I agree. No, yeah, you, thanks, agree. thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, Dread. No, but you don't like Dread. No, I don't like Dread. Oh, yeah. oh what are you talking what? about? He doesn't like Dread. So I you're out like ruled, son. I'm actually Dread. not. It's great. <laughs> you don't like Phantom Menace? I like it fine. I don't think it's amazing or anything, but I like Last Mohicans more than. Hey, man. It was our comparison. I never thought I'd compare those two movies. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. <laughs> well, we probably <laughs> should get to uh, Sam's pick. Welcome to, yeah, so, welcome to Sam's, Sam's pick. On, uh, yeah, Sam's well, pick. He knows for sure. Ever since I first did the episode with him, uh, super informal and super random. I mean, last night's episode was super Phantom random. Phantom Menace? Yeah, but our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this? You're in a This three? is going to be Sam's number three. Sam's number three. Okay. <laughs> so one of the famous villain tropes or types of characters, I guess, is the force of nature, which I don't think we've gotten to yet. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. No, but, not. Um, and it's really popular in the Western genre. And I think the modern Western that's done it the best is No Country for Old Men. And that's Anton Chigurh. Dude, yes. He is so intimidating, so ruthless. Like, you have no idea where he comes from. He just shows up and he is just, you know murderous and unpredictable unpredictable and he just takes a step or breathes and you're afraid of him you know absolutely and just like Lecter, you you think yeah. that he's okay maybe a little awkward a little weird but okay and then then boom done yeah absolutely it's yeah he's awesome. just you seen no so it's just you two Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, oh, yeah, you haven't Michael seen Baker. it? Oh, no. just, I'm not. No, it's it's a great film. Yeah, Roger really Deakins is. directed the shit. I mean, uh, d- uh, Coen did, Brothers. The Coen Brothers. Yeah. And then Roger Deakins' cinematography right. is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's such a great movie. And it's, it's, the Coen Brothers. I yeah. About that. <laughs> and it's Javier Bardem's best performance, oh, I think. Like it's, I mean, he won the supporting actor Oscar for it for that year. And. Then he's got the haircut too. That haircut <laughs> that's a makes weird it haircut. even yeah. scarier. It's yeah, that's so weird, you know. But it's freaky. Yeah, he's, Tom he's a Jones great did a, did a great, uh, great performance in that too. Yeah, actually. and Josh Brolin and too. And Josh Brolin. Yeah, wow. it's great. I gotta watch that again. And Woody Harrelson. Fancy, fancy. Oh. He was like, wait, what's that? Man. Woody Harrelson. He's in it too. Stellar. He's a stellar. Cast. That's a dude that's in a lot of movies, stacked. but you don't know he is. Just yeah. like the dude that's in God's Not Dead. <laughs> um, he's, in, he's in everything <laughs> and uh, i don't know uh, yeah, but, time, but. and then the guy who's in the dark knight he's in the most movies of all time <laughs> William Bale. <laughs> no uh, it's it's the uh, thickness yeah uh mm-hmm. it's julia roberts brother or, oh eric or, roberts eric roberts he's yeah. in, like the most movies ever with that uh, just well that yeah. Well, that was a very fun and cinephile pick. <laughs> he just moves on. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We almost watched that today, but then we chose Gone Girl. Yeah. That was nice to hear as well on this, you know, movie podcast. That's something, you know, that John's yeah. normally the one who breaks the franchise barrier, but uh, <laughs> really, I mean, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Right. Yeah, yeah probably. Justin yeah. does the TV shows. I'm like, yes. I'm like Marvel, Star Wars, DC, Sonic, 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 Sonic. Sonic, Sonic, Sonic. That's, exactly it, that's exactly what it is. It's like, let's take your rose-colored glasses off <laughs> and let's watch Grown Up. <laughs> let's stop saying you love the smell. Of popcorn. <laughs> well, I, can popcorn. I do love popcorn. What is it? We do love popcorn. You're so on we are on three. number three. Is this me? Yeah, yeah you. Oh, yeah. this is McNeil. All it's right. You. Yeah. I completely lost track of time. All right. So number three it's is good. going to be a villain, and I actually just watched this movie. <laughs> <laughs> we are the hero. <laughs> All right. Number three is a hero who needs no introduction. Um, number three is I actually just watched this movie recently for like the eleventeenth time, and. And this <laughs> Sam says that too. Yeah, McNeil says that as well. And um, yeah, no, it's Thanos because um, okay. <laughs> the second <Yeah>. dupe. <laughs> I don't know what he just said. I don't know what he said either. Duplicate. Oh, duplicate. Wow. I was really, like, you really stretched like in there. The the they say, oh, we got soups in here. It's like, no, nah, we got dupes in here. We got dupes oh, in here. Crap. I just literally. Yeah, yeah, you did. It's yeah. okay, though. Yeah, I just thought of, yeah. I thought of another villain that could have been amazing. Yeah. I'll give it to you. Yeah. So, Thanos, um, spoiler alert, we're getting into my big three franchise territory now. Oh, look out. Yeah. Oh. Look so, out. Uh, Thanos is the Marvel choice. We're just going to say that right off the bat. Uh, he is the greatest.
greatest Marvel villain made. He's the best one handled. And everything that Sam said is true. The buildup of the entire Infinity Saga to Thanos is incredible. But really, I mean, just him in Infinity War. Then when all of a sudden it's revealed of who this guy is after seeing him three times previously to now have it fully revealed and right off the bat, Infinity War does not take a break. You don't feel safe from him in that movie, especially in theaters for the first time. You had no idea what he was capable of, what he was going to do. You felt nervous when you he's entering Earth for the first time and they're all yeah, in Wakanda. It's like a mess. And like, yeah, and like the breeze is going, like just the eeriness of him. And then also just the entire performance from Josh Brolin. Like, I mean, Thanos is truly like one of those film villains that are just like going to always go down as one of the greatest ever made. He and handled so well. He was handled so well and it was so fun to live that experience in the MCU mm -hmm. of actually seeing that unfold and seeing something that good be handled. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say about Thanos. Now we are going to grive it over to the Griff Man after well, this commercial break. You're showing well <laughs> almost there, but you're showing you're showing Alyssa the MCU. I have completed showing Alyssa the uh, MCU of the movies that we want to watch. Because oh. he's showing his girlfriend the MCU as well. Sam? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> On Labor Day, we got to uh, Infinity War. Okay. That's where we currently are. So we need to we need to get to Ant-Man and the Wasp, yeah. Captain Marvel, and Endgame. And then huh, only watch Endgame. See if we want to move on to Phase 4, I guess, which... I want to, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. That is very interesting. We took a lot of movies out. McNeil? Yo, okay, <laughs> here. Yeah. McNeil, why don't you go and just quickly list in, in 30 seconds what your proper MCU viewing is. So the MCU viewing that... Uh, um, fucking God. Uh, Look what you just did. <laughs> it's, it's a clip. It's a clip. It's a clip. <laughs> so the MCU viewing that... I just watched the movie for the first time and it works and you miss nothing is what I call the big three saga. And this is where you are really, it's more of a contained story, really following the story of the Avengers. And then it turns out you don't really need all these additional movies. They're great and you can treat them as a spinoff. And if you want to watch them down the road, but just like you weren't introduced to Hawkeye and Black Widow in their own film and then you'd made complete sense of who they were, you don't need to necessarily be introduced to Ant-Man in his own film. And just like you weren't even introduced to Black Black Panther in his own movie. He's yeah. from Civil War. So and Spider Man. So like, yeah. I'll, it just it just works. So the films that we just watched of an entire MCU watch through were Iron Man, Iron Man Two, Thor, the First Avenger, the Avengers, Iron Man Three, Thor: The Dark World, Winter Soldier, and then to keep the story going and to not break the momentum of the story that we're currently watching, we went ahead and dug into Age of Ultron, then into Civil War. And then into Spider-Man Homecoming, that is the best time to then take a break from this ongoing story of just follow up, follow up, follow up to then go into space. You have to get introduced to the Guardians because they t play too much of an essential role for Thanos and Infinity War with Gamora and also the Guardians themselves just as a unit. Yeah. That is the one necessity that you do have to break from that with. But it's cool because then we're still in space for Thor Ragnarok. We're staying in that world. So the feeling still remains the same. And that's such a crucial part of watching these stories when you have to break the feeling. So going from the feeling of Guardians to Thor Ragnarok, it feels like you're in the same world. It works. Then Thor Ragnarok, immediately into the beginning of Infinity War, we just went fun movie, fun movie, great movies into all of a sudden what is going on, Infinity War and Endgame, close the book. That's very nice. Solid. That is That's very solid. Crazy. Yeah. I feel like if I watch it that way, I would actually like a couple of the movies that I currently hate more. Maybe. Because I think it was the passage of time and being like, come on, dude, just give me the good one because mm -hmm. I know there's going to be two mid movies in between. Yep. It, uh, it does. It just takes you out of it when you're watching it. And then I feel like those are more fun to then go and watch maybe after. Yeah. And just be like, so this is what happened during this time. Yeah. But it's not necessary for the momentum of the story. I like it. And I can address any complaints that people have with this. Um, the biggest, actually, the only really one that you kind of need to show would just be the post credit scene of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Because that's the only thing that I ever had to really explain. Because like when you meet Ant Man in Civil War, oh, yeah. it's just like, oh, he's a new hero. Got it. Mm -hmm. He's kind of dumb. Okay. Like <laughs> I don't need, I don't need more information. Well, it's no, Paul because that's what we said in Civil it's War. Paul he, he met, he shook hands with Captain, Captain America, and he's like, I'm Ant Man. Oh, yeah, I'm shaking your hand too long. He's like, it's we're like he's a, a fan. Yeah, he's a fan. We're meeting a new hero. He's comedic. And then all right, so here he is. And then flash over Robert Downey Jr. He's also meeting a new hero. 
with yeah. Spider-Man. It's of the same course. thing. There's an Ant-Man and a Spider-Man now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to give it over to Griffin for yo, his yo, yo, number. Yo. Hey, yo, yo, yo. The guy with third most viewed TikTok. Thank you, Griffin. You're welcome. Wow. I'll say wild stuff for you. You might have what? You need to clip that for myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> number three pick. Yeah. Are you still recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, number three pick. This is by far my most niche pick. Um, I highly doubt it. I think the Harry Potter one is pretty niche. Um, this is, no, niche. Right, no, okay, sure, this is sure, way sure. more niche than Harry Potter. One Piece? No, that actually, One Piece, if, if we had kept animated on, I would have gotten a Naruto pick. There's a live action. That would have been piece, the only. Though. Yeah, but any villain. Oh, I guess I could have picked one. If we but. did uh, animate as well, uh, my number five would have been Kido. Well, that's oh, the thing. Like, nice. we should do an animated one because when you do animated it, it's also anime, and that's why it would have screwed up yeah, all of our lists. Not that we've thrown off everything, but no, I did have an Naruto one block, but I had to toss that out. All right. But um, no, so if you've seen the show Chuck, this is a spoiler to the show Chuck. Yeah, that's right. Anybody here? Chuck watchers? Anybody? Anybody? I'm Except sad. Justin? Oh, that was sad. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, the audience that is, is, in fact, that Chuck Watchers. That is a Watson. negative so, Ghost Rider. I Chuck, you can show your face. Uh, Chuck I'm is, so sad, by the way. Why are you so sad? Because I forgot yeah, I know. about that show. Yeah. But I'm glad you have it. I, I, it. Chuck is my favorite show of all time. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently on a on a rewatch with my wife, and it's a, it's just a delight. Uh, there is a character played by Brandon Ralph oh, in Chuck, oh, that's great. who goes by the name oh. of Shaw, who is again he toes the line of like compelling and infuriating for me before I get mm -hmm. to like the villains that I really find compelling. Um, that he he made me hate Brandon Ralph. <laughs> until i saw him in other things and i was like wow. oh he's actually a pretty chill dude but like just having the, yeah. that was my first interaction with brandon Ralph. Wow. seeing him as shaw and i was like this guy must be like a highly accomplished villain actor yeah who only does roles like this because <laughs> this is so unbelievably good i hate this guy so much i'm so tense and like and then he's superman and then he's superman, <laughs> he's superman. His name is adam. Yeah. but he's adam his story revolves around him having a romantic relationship with one of the main characters who you know if you're worried about spoilers i seriously apologize but finds out that this character actually deeply wronged him at one point but didn't know it neither of them knew it d d based off of circumstances and he kind of just goes insane and it's it's really amazing um yeah i agree with you but I think my favorite villain from Chuck is actually Timothy Dalton's character. Ooh, oh, he is also really good. I don't know. I have. We were just talking about this earlier. We we're getting food at uh, Poultry Deli and Quail. Um, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm gonna call you out now. What the EDQ? <laughs> oh, it's the name I created because it's technically it? it's it's people dedicated to quality, but it's so stupid. But what you say? Again? Poultry Deli and Quail. They don't anyway, for Quail. I know they don't, but it's meat. But it's, it's funny. It's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, chicken. And it starts with a Q. And it starts with a Q. <laughs> wow. But Volkov. Volkov, dude. Volkoff. He's literally, okay, so he was James Bond. Oh. He's literally a James Bond villain in Chuck yeah. because he was one of the classics James, what are you laughing at? Well, one no, of the I classic saying, James Bond. No, but I was also, he was a villain in The Rocketeer. And he's great. And and he was a hero in Looney Tunes back in action. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch he that. Yes, you do. Uh, he's great. Timothy yeah. Dalton, I think, is... I, I could be wrong, but I think he's underrated. Oh, absolutely. He's in Doom Patrol in season one. Yeah. He's great in that. Hilarious. Um, but yeah. But no, that is a solid Chuck villain pick, and I kind of had to balance between the two, but Shaw, to me, is like the pinnacle of, yeah. of like, closeness with the characters. Mm. You yeah. know? That's what else he's in. Oh, and Brandon Routh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know you the the third movie. evil ex. <laughs> Also oh. amazing. Our our vegan bassist. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Didn't you know? Great pick. Todd's a vegan. <laughs> it's actually hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh Shaw from Chuck. Man, it's number three. It's a solid pick. We're getting intense now, folks. Two seconds later. Yeah, so we were we were talking over the break and I think we're ready to hear John's number two pick. <laughs> for top five favorite villains of all time. John, if you would be so kind to share that with everyone here all right. and the world. I really feel his eyeballs. I'm just really curious because I know you're number one. We don't know. We don't know. No, I know you're number one. I know you're number one. I know everyone's own number. I don't know yours. I know our three number one. I know ours. You sure? I just don't know. You actually don't know my number one. I do. You know what? You don't know mine. Who are you? 
Well, you know McNeil. I think I, 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 well, I know McNeil's. I don't, I think I know Sam's. I, okay. Griffin is the enigma right well, here. Why do you feel so bothered by mine? Because if you, if you don't pick this character, then you're just wrong. But oh. what's your number two? My number two <laughs> is Jigsaw. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Justin. You had one job. Why didn't you put Jigsaw in there? You love Jigsaw. I do. Uh, oh, I man. do. Oh, I suck. Okay. okay? Yeah. yeah. I suck. So, it's okay. John. So, what is Jigsaw from? <laughs> no, I, I know the character, but I'm interested as to why. <laughs> because he is both tragic and and fleet. He says he truly thinks that what he's doing is right to try to preach to preach to everyone and doing it in the worst possible way demented and especially with the whole idea of him saying i've never killed anyone i mean that yeah from a certain point of view i guess but the fact that he immediately wants to go with that just shows you right there that he's insane because yes he may not have actually he leaves he let he he allows the people that he that he puts these games that puts the people into these games. He allows them to have the ability to either live or die. The problem is though is that regardless, he is still a killer. He makes it like literally impossible. Yes. but like there is a sliver of hope, but yeah. like it's not there. He, he may well no he he does make it more of a sliver of hope compared to his two disciples. His yeah. two disciples do not make it. They make it whatsoever because yeah. they got vendettas. Yep. Um, well, one of them got vendetta, the other one is just, just insane. Just a psychopath. Yeah, exactly. So, for him, he very much is just very cunning. The traps are always inventive and, and brutal. And his voice, mm -hmm. Tobin Bell's voice, is so iconic. That's up there with your Orson Welles, your James Earl Jones, your, your Peter, Cullen, Peter Cullen Prime. Like, it's up there for sure um the films vary in quality obviously but what's great and even they know this spoilers uh you know he obviously is killed in, in, in the third film but they bring him back in the other movies with flashbacks and other types of, of reworking and reworking with the timelines and stuff like that because he's an amazing villain and it was also great to see him in Saul uh, Saul Ten uh, because one. this one takes place in between. So he uh, some of these fell early films. So he's uh, very much alive in this, and it was great to see him in that. Mm. But yeah, Tobin Bell as Jigsaw, it's as John Kramer. Basically, he's got this. He's got a very similar backstory to Mister Freeze. Yeah, and that's yeah. what's great about both okay. of them is he's doing because his wife had his wife was pregnant was pregnant and she mm -hmm. died yeah and so well, no no he, she, he lived but uh, she lived but the baby was killed by a bum she did live. yeah 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 so he's taking out his vengeance but then he also has terminal illness yeah so he knows he has limited time and he's like i'm gonna do whatever i can to get revenge which is wrong but it's also like what hero do we know who also wants to get revenge, which is basically concerned justice? It's very much a but done in a completely different way. It's very much like a back and forth thing where he wants revenge, but he also wants to teach. Like he always claims that this is his work. It's very, very fascinating. Mm. You know what oh. you did just make me really want to watch though? So no. no. Sub Zero. Sub Zero yeah. is amazing. <laughs> Come on. That's that is literally one of the best Batman it animated best movies Batman. ever. Does it go into Mr. Freeze's origin at all in it? No, it doesn't. You need the episode. Uh, I mean, you need Heart of Ice with it. I mean, you kind of do at the very end with the, with the reporters talking mm -hmm. about it. But um, no, yeah, you, you at least need Heart of Ice. You need Heart of Ice and Deep Freeze, yeah. I think. But anyways. Justin. <laughs> we just had an intellectual conversation <laughs> with our <laughs> It's great, yeah. yeah that um, happens, uh, you know. You're going to love my number two. Well, I've been getting a lot of hours you know, about your number two. A lot of people have been asking about it. Yeah. So Everybody um, knows. I know who your number two is. Do you? I don't. Do you know my number one? Yeah. No. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. He doesn't even know his number. <laughs> <laughs> I might change it. It did now. screw up <laughs> earlier, though. Who me? Yeah. How? You said this is. You said your number three was the introduction of the three big franchises, but you already introduced Palpatine. This is the. Be <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wanted to do one per series, but yeah, but I no, couldn't. that's all, because. I like that you did bring Palpatine in because yeah. I had Sheev on my list at one point mm -hmm. and I took Sheev off. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you're right. It's not the introduction to the big franchises, but it's the it's the kickstart of what I would consider the big three villains for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, number two. I, yeah, I'm gonna look something up really quick. I'm very organized with these. You're gonna, titles. You're gonna nice look titles. up something. Right? Yeah, I just need to figure out this person's real name because I for, always forget that. We have to the... wait while Justin actually makes his list. So. No, I, I have <laughs> intermission. I have the name. I have the, the actual like da, 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 tired name. of fellow podcasters da, da, who haven't completed da, da, their list in time. He doesn't even know the name of his number two villain. All right, all right. Here we go. I got it. I got. We are back. I got it. My number two is none other than John Gilman, and that is Homelander himself. Oh, yeah. ah, uh, absolutely. I didn't know his last name. It's I weird thought he was Gilman. one of the bandits from Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was not on your episode. Someone said like they picked two people as like one of the villain selects, and it was the two people from Home Alone. Harry and Marv. Yeah, but they were like, can we? Can I do that? And then they, I think you guys let it slide. Yeah, but yeah. John Gilman, creepier than... It makes him sound creepier, honestly. Homelander is... Villain, dude. dude, I'm talking... Me and John are the only ones... Actually, no, Aaron's who was in here as well. He's. We've seen season four. Uh, that show's great. I... Show's great, and Homelander literally... Basically, Homelander and Butcher make that entire show, but all the other characters also are amazing, too. It's just... It's, it's, it's like... I don't know, dude. That world is so rich with... with darkness and semblances of yeah a lot of stuff that happens in that show but homelander at, at his core he just wants to be loved and that's in turn his biggest weakness which i think is very interesting because superman we have kryptonite we have magic and then i'm not entirely sure what hyperion's is but i'm sure it's pretty similar to superman omni man <laughs> whatever i don't think he really has a weakness he's just insane Homelander is, he doesn't have a physical weakness besides his lo- his need to be loved, and that's that's a huge reason in the show why things don't really happen against him or why he doesn't do things to the boys in certain instances. Because if he does, he might lose people's love, and what happens at the end of season four is going to make season five go go bonkers, which I'm excited for. But mm. He is just great, and and the acting, one of the best performances of all time for sure. So yeah, like subtle, the subtle performance. How has he not won an Emmy? I don't know, yeah. uh, but Anthony Starr's performance as Homelander is one for the ages, and he is the only one, in my opinion, that can come close to my number one pick. Hmm. Uh, I wonder who that is for performance wise as a villain. Um, I don't know your number one pick. You should, <laughs> but uh, but yes, Homelander is my number two, and that is that is the good old boy John Gilman, not John Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Now, wow. To, what's his name? Sam. 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 Yeah. Sam. From do you appreciate Homelander? Yeah, Sam from Florida. <laughs> I. Do you understand? I understand. You understand. Um, I understand. And this is where you bring in the TV. My third Aspect. TV picked. Your third TV picked. Yeah. Out of the ball. Yep. So, <laughs> that, uh, that means shows are great and people should watch it. I am intrigued to hear your number one, though. Yeah. And I'm very curious of who that could be. Mm-hmm. Sam. I am too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the sword and the stone. <laughs> the world has been asking. Take this staff. For five years now, you have had this number two in the can yes now we just gotta know what it is well it turns out that my number two is our third dupe to Uh quote there we go (laughs) there we go and that's hannibal lecter which was yeah what is your number that was my number four or five i think it was four i did not have i did oh third dupe i say stupid i think hannibal lecter is a fantastic villain i think he's the best horror villain of all time and i think it's just a fantastic performance from anthony hopkins and i echo everything you said about him but the only thing i'll add is that i think what's so interesting about that character is his background in psychology and how he utilizes that to manipulate his prey basically and so when that moment happens when clarice meets him Mm -hmm. um and you know that he's a, he was a psychologist, you can see that he just knows everything about her. Psychoanalyzing. Like, yeah, Absolutely. he can just read a person yeah. like that and understand somebody fully. And I think that's what's the creepiest thing about him, aside from eating people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. At least yeah. it's not eating animals, am I right? 
Wait, what the hell? That dude can show out of a double standard, does it? <laughs> oh, wow. Man. That might be this, that might be the only part I cut out. <laughs> That's like, oh, wow. that should be in snow. <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> okay. But you're a psychology major, right? I was. Yeah, yeah you were. So that's what's also very interesting, too. Wow. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Like, does it, <laughs> are you saying it makes me Hannibal Lecter? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> like I I had never really... You're the closest one to them. Yeah. Because you like psychological thrillers, thrillers probably the most. But, too. like, you can also analyze those characters in a different way than probably we think of. Um, you get inside the people who get inside people's heads. Yeah. Did you like any of the other films? Like I haven't seen like any Red of the Dragon, uh, I've just seen Silence of the Lambs. Okay. I'm still alive. I would, I, was... I would like to hear your take on Red, Dra Red Dragon and Hannibal. Hannibal is literally a, the sequel, like literally the second the, the second film uh, after Silence, and then Red uh, Red Dragon is a prequel to Silence. Which yeah. one? Which everyone has Gary Oldman wasn't bad. Hannibal. I don't. I don't think Red Dragon. I like that much, but Hannibal. I think was pretty good. I've always been kind of scared to watch them because, like, I love Silence of Lambs so much, and I yeah. know those two aren't as well received, and yeah. I didn't want to like ruin it for me. You know, yeah. I didn't want it to be like watching the Matrix trilogy. You know. <laughs> oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Okay. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I we, we, another, another time. But I yes. actually, <laughs> but I actually got to watch the trilogy, and it's actually not that bad. Especially the sequel. I like Evolutions. Is I like uh, the whatever the third one was. They all start with an R. Yes, yeah. but right, no, the, Revolution. Yeah, yeah, that's Matrix Revolution. That's the, the third one I thought was Reloaded. the second best. Reloaded, I, and then the fourth one. Is, oh no, that can no, just no. That can go straight. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam fell asleep in the original. I, what? <laughs> Damn. You mean McNeil? You just McNeil <laughs> fell asleep. Just like what? <laughs> the not. first, the first time we did watch the Matrix or. I think you're maybe showing both of us it for the yeah. first time. Yeah, and I, it was a late night. Yes, and I it was a late night, and we used to watch maybe three movies in, and it would be after like Golden time. it would be after like maybe a day of college, a day of work, yeah. and then and then you know maybe at three o'clock in the morning I started to doze off, <laughs> <laughs> and it's somehow like he's setting the record straight today. <laughs> John was like, "You can't hang." <laughs> We got some of the funniest videos though during that, oh, that era. Gosh, yeah, I'm scaring you. me awake. Yeah, I might pop one in during the edit. Yeah, yes. I mean, you can. <laughs> you got the power. Some a lot of random noises. It's almost like there's another person. Another in this person. Room. Here. Is there another person? <laughs> <laughs> what? What is that noise? Some Brian Gosling looking <laughs> mofo. <laughs> there is someone in the room. <laughs> The heat, the heat. No, it's a dude from Dial of Destiny. Justin, do you want Indiana Jones? Oh, God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the henchman. Absolutely. But yes. Hi. We need to hear. Are we going to introduce Mc? It's Mark Neal's second pick. We need McNeil's second pick. Here he did. Got McNeil's second pick. Oh, Sam's pick. Oh, you know something about stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that's all right. Aligned. McNeil's second pick, folks. Justin has no idea who it's going to be. He has no idea. He's really leaning. I do have an idea. I know what it is. All right, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh, Confident, oh, Mr. I know yeah. so much. Why don't you have it, it written down? I do. You can't do a switcheroo on me. No, I'm not doing a switcheroo. This would be genuine. If you get it, this is who Sam McNeil's number two <laughs> favorite villain of all time performance is. You have to be confident with it. You have to say it. Darth Vader. Darth Vader is my number two pick. Ah. <laughs> um, it's all been said before. Tragic, amazing, incredible, iconic. Everything that you could say for a villain, he is. He is asthmatic. a... Um, asthmatic. Look <laughs> <laughs> at six foot five asthmatic. <laughs> There's yes, um robot chicken. That's yeah. a great oh. scene. There's nothing that you can really even say about Darth Vader um that is towards the negative. I mean, he's just absolutely perfect, absolutely incredible and um uh, my number 2 favorite villain of all time and um I think we're just going to leave it with that. I mean, I also also there's nothing bad you can say about Darth Vader before the suit. True. Ooh, before the suit, what do you mean with that? The suit it oh. amplifies it. The suit amplifies it 100%. Fucking cool, man. But it is fun to yeah. think of Darth Vader 
just as Anakin. Just as Anakin. Because yeah, no, Darth that's... Vader's second half of the film. It's cool. Mm. Yeah, no, Revenge is goaded. Revenge is goaded. Anyone who talks bad about Revenge. Phantom Menace, Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah that Darth Vader. Yippee! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <no>. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't hate the Phantom Menace at all. Just I, don't as a, this. I don't it's just like it. Average. I don't hate it. There's new Star Wars stuff to hate on now, but I love the Phantom Menace. <laughs> I'll just say that. No. But then you can but then you can't say that because then you're what are you gonna Why? one up that? Because then you're like, I love the fan I love Empire. I do. How do you just how do you like separate the two? Phantom, attack, <laughs> <laughs> return, revenge, a new that? hope, empire. Because like when you use the word love or hate, it's like why can't I love six films? I guess you can. If you say that, then that's cool. Yeah. All right. Dope. Are you happy with that? Dope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are giving it over to Griffmeister for number two. I have now I folks, I have no idea what Griffin's number two pick could possibly be. I think I know what it is. I don't. Ooh, all right, let's play this game again. Oh, all right. All right. We're going to toss it over to Justin to claim the number two pick for Griffin. Justin, do you know the answer? I'm going Joker. No. Wow. Wow. No. All right, I rest my case. I fail. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> my number two pick is Saruman the White. Wow. Lord of the Rings. Wow. But not Sauron? Wow. Not Sauron. For a specific reason. Sauron exists like when you watch Lord of the Rings, you're not necessarily dealing with Sauron as an individual. He's like the Palpatine and Saruman's like the Vader. Somewhat, yes. Yeah. Sauron is, yeah. exists as more like a force or an idea, right? Which is super important to Lord of the Rings, right? You need to have this idea of evil, which Sauron represents. You see him manifest through his armies, through his leaders, one of which is Saruman. You get so much more character moments, so many more character moments of Saruman. You get to mm -hmm. like watch him betray Gandalf. You see this all happen. You think about what he used to be. Even in the Hobbit films, you kind of get to see like the beginnings of his machinations against, you know, the good. Maybe um, rings of power. You know, maybe rings of power, maybe. <laughs> um, and then so, uh, and then just the idea of what Saruman used to represent versus what he became because he gave in to despair mm -hmm. in the face of Sauron's like overwhelming influence and power that uh and then how gandalf has to rise up and be what saruman should have been right like that's yeah. how when, when he introduces himself in the two towers as gandalf the white he's like mm -hmm. i i am gandalf but i'm also kind of not i'm actually really saruman just yeah i'm doing what saruman should have been doing right now mm -hmm. you know instead saruman is working against them you know leading a gigantic army he exists a lot of power so much charisma christopher lee does an oh, amazing yeah. oh, yeah. job with saruman mm -hmm. uh his death scene's amazing mm -hmm. uh and so i find him very compelling i find his performance very compelling i think he's scary um uh, but in that like i am older than time i know much wisdom mm -hmm. but i'm also going insane you know yeah in that kind of way that you feel that dude literally played like basically the same character in two of the biggest IPs ever. Yeah. But like, also, I, well, James Bond, yeah. he played James Bond on too, way back in the day. You could argue he was the villain in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well. I don't remember what? that. You know what? You know what? Wasn't he in, yeah. wasn't he in, uh, himself. Willie. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he in Home Alone? Willie. No. What? You were thinking of, um, R.I.P. Christopher Lee. The other dude. Yeah. Oh, he other was other also in Death Metal Man. You were thinking of Joe Pesci. <laughs> no, but wasn't there, there was a movie where he played like a creepy, like homeless man, right? A creepy homeless man. No, no, you were thinking of Christopher Lloyd and Dennis the Menace. That's the guy I'm thinking of. <laughs> oh my gosh. And by the way, honorable mention, really quick, from Christopher Lloyd playing a villain. Oh, he is yes. a great villain in Dennis the Menace. He's but creepy, dude. Oh, you haven't seen him in, in another movie. That's the one that I'm giving honorable mention to right now. I just want to say honorable mention Judge Doom. Yes. Christopher That's his name. Lloyd. His, no, his name in Dennis oh. the Menace. <laughs> I don't know if he has one. He's Dennis's Menace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Menace. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. Yeah. Judge Doom, yeah, but anyway, from, Who Framed? From who Framed Roger Rabbit. He's incredible. Like, ah, that's a movie I watch. I need to it's watch it one day. Dude. He's an amazing villain. Yeah, should watch that. Will I watch Toy Story or Who Framed Roger Rabbit first? I, don't I really know. hope you I like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Rabbit more than Toy Story. It has a lot more, it has more style. Yes, it does. All right. Sorry, Mom. That's a great pick. <laughs> I I completely forgot about Lord of the Rings because I like, it's so hard for me to put Sauron in there because like you said, he's not, he's the overarching thing, but like, there's a thing to be said with 
seeing the face hmm. and uh now we're getting to see it with rings of power which, which is incredible e people are hitting rings of power you has got to see it just, but, uh, oh, i hope it pays off because when you see it, it will. you see sauron in the opening of special of the ring it's fucking that incredible. crazy i just kind of wish that i kind of wish that instead of him just being that spirit mm -hmm. I wish that you saw him at the at the very end, like maybe manifest. Like he's able to. That that's another. Well, I don't want to get into it. I, <laughs> it's the power brings in some things that, like, I don't know. But we'll, we'll it, see. it all I, makes I'm, I'm sense. Gonna, it does, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's, it, does. it does. Well, we need to do enough some of that. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> anyway, this is the moment of truth. Everything so going strong. Moment of truth. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, folks. This is the one that you've all come here for. You made a fast forward to this point. We hope you didn't. We hope you sat through the whole thing. If not, go back and sit through the whole thing before you get to this point, because we are unveiling our number one favorite. Oh, we are. We are villains. Wow. Did you did you already mention our mentions? Um, if you want to, I, I did prepare any honor. I, I, I threw just that honorable mention out there just for fun. But if you yeah. want to give your honorable mentions that you prepared, we're going, John, do you have something you want to do or you want to? I feel like I the I ones do. you missed. I think I do. All right. Yeah, a couple. Two seconds later. We are here now. We are back for honorable mentions. John and Justin have a plethora of them, and I have two that I'm going to drop, and uh, we're going to give it over to John. John, if you'd like to be <laughs> as kind to name your honorable mentions right now of ones that you wanted to, you really wanted to be in here, but you just can't, but you want to honorably mention them anyway. Mm. Yes, okay. Actually, um, just, let's just do say Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Ki uh, Kira. Uh, Ooh, well, that's less animated. No, oh. we, we're not doing oh, animated. True. true. Yeah. God. <laughs> he still got it out, though. What? I know, man. Oh, oh, so you want to no, That's a teaser. <laughs> it's because I watched a video on Death Note today. That's oh, why. So it's great. my head. Great show. But uh, no, uh, Two Face mm -hmm. from Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, Magneto, for sure. Uh, Megatron, actually. I yeah. was wondering yeah. where he was. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, and The Terminator. The wow. The Terminator. Yeah. Absolute good one, incredible. Yeah, bravo, Terminator One or Terminator Two? Go, yes, Terminator One. Yes, man, good man. You are a man of culture. <laughs> hey, that's a show though, Terminator Zero. Oh, I know, I know. I just can't, I it. saw them watch it. Two episodes in, it's so exactly one wins because it was three, two, one. But we have the superior taste in the two that's because true. Terminator Two is oh, yeah. definitely a better movie. Oh, that's a debate. That's, that's a debate. That's that's a debate. debate. We, we just opened open up a can of worms. That would be a great debate. Two v two here. I can go. I really thought you'd one, say that he just three v one. That's a can of whoop ass. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> All right, Justin. Who are your honorable mentions? Fifty of them. Or should we go. say dishonorable villains? So let's let's go. Uh, oh God! <laughs> I'm gonna say ones that haven't been mentioned oh, already. Oh boy! Yeah, I'm gonna say ones that have No, it's it's not that many. I'm gonna go Vecna from Stranger Things. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. he's really good cool. Pick. Good pick. Okay. Um, Jack Torrance from The Shining. Yes. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would always want to put him in top five. Can't do it. Uh, General Zod. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, Annie Wilkes from no, Misery. Wow. Wow. Yes. Ooh, that's a really that's good. Really episode. creepy. That's probably really very s similar, but also very different from your pick. And then I will also, th even though I don't like the show, I gotta admit Benjamin Linus from Lost is a great villain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, creepy dude who who voices Joker in one of the animated movies. Oh, my, is it Michael Emerson? Michael Emerson. Uh, yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah, those are my honorable mentions. Nice. Um, uh, do you have honorable mentions? All right, we're gonna try this. I could go on forever, but I'm gonna limit it to five. Okay. So uh, I have Hans Landa from Inglorious Bastards. Nice. Uh, Norman Bates from Psycho. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Voldemort. Yeah. Gotta have Voldemort. Yeah. Terrence Fletcher from Whiplash. Nice. Dude. And wow. Amy Elliott Dunn and Gone Girl. And I'm yeah. also going to shout out Koba for Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Koba? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh. 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 Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a great one. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just watched Gone Girl, like we mentioned earlier. And yeah, I understand having that pick in there because she is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> she's crazy. She's wild. You know what she's crazier. You know what her or uh, crazy. what was her? Annie Wilkes. What was her name from Misery? Annie Wilkes. Yeah. Who do you think is crazier? I I gotta say I gotta well, I gotta say gone on I gotta say gone girl <laughs> yeah because yeah. they're married. Like Annie sure. Wilkes, she just she's infatuated with the character with uh, the writer. Mm -hmm. 
what she does is more detrimental to the person's body but like i don't know just logically gone girl she's it's more detrimental to his mind and lifetime <laughs> lifelong like yeah oh, so crazy. yeah crazy. Oh. crazy great movie so good, what are mcneil's honorable mentions <laughs> so uh mcneil's honorable mentions are going to be uh the green goblin mm. from spider-man okay. as already mentioned judge doom from who framed roger rabbit <laughs> um the shredder from teenage mutant ninja turtles 1990 that's hilarious and um now well, there was one more floating out there but it just left so whoops bring it back <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh yes the raptors from jurassic park mm. okay true yeah Very yeah <laughs> great that's good yeah that's what you meant okay yeah i okay. mean they are villain. i mean could you argue they are the villains of the first jurassic park the main ones abso absolutely yeah absolutely or it'd be wayne knight's character yeah yeah you want to <laughs> keep uh, 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 yo <laughs> newman <laughs> which actually is one of my honorable mentions <laughs> yeah oh that's is that the one i texted you i do i did i yeah. did i did get some i did uh, newman's some. a great new great pick from seinfeld here. yes seinfeld. absolutely <laughs> hilarious villainous in every way uh, all because out of the way to ruin Jerry's day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my only other honorable mention. Hello, Jerry. Is, uh, <laughs> Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Hello, Newman. <laughs> you want to know about zip codes? <laughs> <laughs> They're meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> I think Griffin has taken on the entire persona from Seinfeld. <laughs> um, no. Okay, now my other honorable mention, I think, is uh, was almost made it to my list uh, Walter White. Oh, oh yeah. I haven't seen Breaking Bad. Uh, uh, villainous protagonist. <laughs> oh. He's a villain, <laughs> but protagonist. Have you? Yes, he's yes. a pre protagonist. Yeah. Yes, I haven't seen it by the way. Yes, I have not either. Last night's episode was hilarious. Nick Neal mentioned like four or five different movies, and John was like, "Oh yes." Oh, he's like, "Have you seen it?" No. But which one? Which one was it? Where I'm like, "Yes." He's like, "You've seen this?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." <laughs> he was like, "Finally, oh, one." Actually... What was it? Damn it! Oh, it was What Lies Beneath. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Robert Zemeckis. Michelle Pfeiffer, Harrison Ford. Oh, wow. Horror film. Watch that movie. Good movie, Hopefully, actually. Sounds like a great dinner party as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Lies beneath. Wow. And that line was uh, directly for you at Mike from Cinema 3D. Of, of us. <laughs> I really wish Mike had his picks in for us, but yeah. <laughs> I should have asked Mike from Cinema 3D of his picks. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. He's probably going to say, like, Catwoman. Um, he does not like Jaws. I don't like Jaws either. No, fuck. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. wrong. There is no good shark movie. I'll say that. Whoa. I haven't seen well, it. You like the Meg. The Meg I, is I, amazing. I, I, I was fine with Jaws. I like the Meg. I like the Meg too. I like the, sh the, 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 what about Finding Nemo? That's animated. And that's a great oh, movie. Deep Blue Sea. I haven't seen oh, Deep Blue awesome Sea. I haven't 90s. seen The Shallows. I haven't awesome seen 90s. 47 Meters Down. Out of the ones I've seen, there's no good shark movie yet. You ever seen The Shallows? I want to, you should that's flash that film. clip from SpongeBob if anyone's seen it where the shark goes, hey, that's my family you're talking no. about. Slurping <laughs> 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 a, a drink. Hey, pal. You just blow in from Stupid Town? <laughs> yeah. You just roll in from Stupid Town? <laughs> no, I don't that's know not from. It's from SpongeBob. No, oh. your opinion on shark movies are valid, and I would agree with you for the most part on shark movies. Um, I do like Jaws a lot, yeah. but I do think shark movies are dull at times. It's just like, I mean, yeah. No. Not I get it. Not it's, it's hard. Not the Shallows and not Jaws. I haven't. All the other ones, so. there's a, there is a lot of shark movies i have seen a lot of them I know. but they are not which is yeah, funny because you're deathly good. afraid of sharks i am definitely maybe that adds to it yeah yeah, like I'm, if, I'm I mean, if they made nuts. if they made like a series of like insane ostriches <laughs> on the loose, what? like that would, <laughs> probably would get sit me. you down <laughs> <for sure>. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine a horrible <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, Sam is afraid of anything long necked. If I had to pick my number one fear that I don't know if I could, ooh, <laughs> I don't know if I could handle, like, I could not. I would probably rather you put me in a shark tank underwater than I would rather you put me in a room. Sam's laughing. With Sam's uh, <laughs> McNeil hates ostriches. More than giraffes. I do hate ostriches. I could feed a giraffe probably over coming face to face with an ostrich. Because ostriches are quick. They're fast. They're quick. They're fast. They, yeah, I get it. And there's so much. I, I, I'll, I'll terrify you more. Hmm. 
pretty much that like an ostrich is pretty much like a velociraptor i know it is that's the the same height tell me about why i mentioned them huh? it's the closest yeah, thing i got to that thing sure, sure. Oh, just horrible creatures oh, sorry for all the ostrich lovers out there john that's a clip yes <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh, no, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought we were stopping. Time for your number one. Okay. All right, here it is, folks. Obvious. Number yes. No, it's not obvious. We don't know it yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> no, all right. We have no idea what John's number one pick is or Justin's. Could be Lord Farquaad. Could be Lord Farquaad. <laughs> oh, no, not animated. <laughs> Oof. All right. Look right <laughs> <laughs> the humans in the Shrek look, they look weird. Man. I do love the line where he's like, Fiona, we're about to kiss away from our happily ever after. Oh. Now kiss me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Who is your favorite villain live action of all time? The perfect ying to a protagonist yang. Oh, we're going back to Robotnik. Yes. So, <laughs> no, he, uh, it's the Joker. It's the Joker. Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, it's just. It, I, the, yeah. I should just. Yeah, mine. Justin, right. who's your number? My one? number one is the Joker. Wow. Uh, wow. What? Uh, it's, Mr. Freeze, are it's, <laughs> it's almost too obvious. It is almost it's, too it's obvious. Just, it's just that it's just the perfect yang to Batman. Well, yeah. yeah, let's do this really quick. Okay. Cinema 3D. What's McNeil's? McNeil's pick is also the Joker. It is also the Joker. Yes. Now we don't know what Griffin and Sam's pick are, so I'm very intrigued to hear. It could be around the table Joker yeah. as the greatest villain of all time because he is. It's not, but apparently. we don't know. So, Sam, we're going to give it over to you. We've talked about him enough as yeah, well. So, absolutely. it's. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll just do a little debate right after they mention theirs. All right. That's fair. Well, I was being serious when I said Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Kill the dinosaurs. The ice, the ice magic coming. <laughs> to kick some ice. <laughs> no, it's it's uh, the Joker. He, oh, oh. Okay, all right. Oh, oh. You're going to let us down, pal. Four. This is, so, this is you guys with the Joker. <laughs> Four picks in a row for whoa, just wait Joker. till you tell me your pick and we'll whoa. see what we have to say about yo, that. Yo, that's that, that is gonna be a sound effect that comes back to bite us in the ass. So, Man, that was two two references right there. Griffin, who is your favorite villain of all time and why are you wrong? I I, I, better be I hate to say that it is a dupe. I wish it wasn't a dupe. Oh, dupe. oh I get it. Which uh it's a duplicate. Also, an honorable mention, real quick. Yen from Psych. Enough said. Psych had great villains. So you said Yen and Yang so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Yen and Yang shows to Psych. <laughs> so good. You said it like five times, Josh. Are you on time? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, damn. All right. So, uh, I will, again, since it's a dupe, I'm not going to go super deep into mm. it, but I will say that there is not a villain that I have thought about more, mm. and there is not a villain that has made me sadder in general like that that in thinking about it i just get more and more sad thinking about it due to the tragedy to the tragic nature of anakin skywalker oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> yeah yeah you're not wrong so here's why you're right <laughs> okay like, oh, screw the joker yeah i mean <laughs> no that's, i was oh, you debating it as i was walking up the stairs between darth vader and joker so it's oh, okay that's totally why it was hard fine. to figure out which one yeah which, totally but... respectable choice great, choice great choice and i would say all around the table amazing choices of the greatest villains of all time and those are the two correct answers in my opinion they're my number one and two yeah. <laughs> it was a short debate that was just up the stairs yeah. <laughs> i was like uh, vader joker vader it's a joker right? and then yeah, yeah, yeah. then vader that's yeah. a number two but I mean, it makes sense yeah no absolutely it makes sense we have no. nothing nothing to nitpick of this i don't think there's um, a good debate here because no. they, they both make sense they both make sense Jack Darth Vader's a bitch. <laughs> oh, I know, that's part of the problem <laughs> that's what makes him so damn sad <laughs> Uh, he has come up peace, justice, freedom, uh, choose new empire. Your new empire. <laughs> <laughs> that is all the time we have today. No dolphin sound, but it's okay. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> wow. All right. We're actually, we could do a send off dolphin sound if you want to do it. Oh, One, two, honor three. <laughs> Folks, please comment down below who your top five favorite villains are of all time. Who do you love to hate? We like making dolphin noises. We're going to see you next time. This was, we got to all say it at the same oh. time. Cinema 3D. Ka-chow. <laughs>